Let's talk about Lorentz force. The Lorentz force is the name that we give to a force that a charge feels when it's moving through a magnetic field. Now, there's a couple of weird things about this that make it very different from an electric field. Remember that an electric field, the force is just equal to charge times electric field. So if I double the charge, I double the force, everything's very, very, very simple. The force is in the same direction as the electric field. For magnetic fields, it's very different. We replace that formula with this one. F equals charge times the velocity, and then this is a cross product, which is a type of vector product, which we'll talk about in just a second, cross the magnetic field. All right, now, cross products are strange. What it does is it tells you that I'm going to take these two vectors, and I'm going to form from that the single vector that's perpendicular to both of them. So, let's say the velocity was like that and the magnetic field was like that. Well, there's a vector that's perpendicular to these two directions, and that's this vector right here. So, if I had a magnetic field and a velocity like that, the force will be either in this direction or in this direction. In order to determine which one, I use the right hand rule. The right hand rule is real simple once you get used to it. So let's go ahead and just see how this works. Suppose that I've got a magnetic field like this. I'm going to have the magnetic field coming out of the board. So the magnetic field lines are all pointing like this. It's like I've got a north pole back here, a south pole here. Magnetic field lines coming out of the board. That's what those dots mean. Now, I send a positive charge in to the right. All right, so what direction is the force in? Well, first off, we know because the magnetic field is that way and the charge is moving this way, the force has got to either be up or down because those are the two directions that are perpendicular both to the magnetic field and to the velocity. All right, which one do we pick? Well, we use our right hand, that's why it's called the right hand rule, and we put our thumb in the direction that the charge is moving in, we put our fingers in the direction that the magnetic field is in, and our palm will now point in the direction of the force. All right, so real simple. What I wanna focus on here is what is the magnitude of this force? Now first, I just wanna make this statement again very clear. Force is perpendicular to both the velocity and to the magnetic field. And this is totally different from the way it works in the electric field situation. So magnetic fields can't really exist in just two dimensions. I need all three dimensions. And that's not really the case with electric fields. Magnetic fields, inherently three-dimensional. All right, so what's the magnitude of the force? Well, the magnitude of this force is equal to the charge times the part of the velocity that's perpendicular to the magnetic field times the magnetic field. So only the part of the velocity perpendicular to the magnetic field can contribute. So that means that if I had a magnetic field pointing like that and I send a charge in like that, no part's perpendicular and that means that there's no force. It'll just go straight through along the magnetic field lines. So cross products are all about perpendicular. That's what you should think as soon as you hear the word cross product, you should be thinking right hand rule and perpendicular. All right, so let's go ahead and do a problem. So suppose, oh, let's talk about the units first. So what is the unit of the magnetic field? We haven't seen that yet. Well, now that we've got an expression for force, we can relate the unit of magnetic field, which is called the Tesla, to our standard units. Since the force, that's Newton's, has to be equal to charge, that's coulombs, times velocity, that's meters per second, times magnetic field, that's Tesla. If we solve for the Teslas, then we end up getting one Tesla is equal to one Newton second per coulomb meter, which we could also write as one Newton per ampere meter. All right, a Tesla is a very large magnetic field. Chances are you've never been around a magnetic field that big, unless you've gotten an MRI or something like that.
So in comparison, the Earth's magnetic field is only between 30 and 60 micro Tesla, millionths of a Tesla, 30 at the equator and 60 at the poles. It's stronger near the poles because that's where all the field lines are coming together. All right, so let's go ahead and do a problem. So suppose that I've got a seven micro coulomb charge and it's gonna move at five kilometers per second at 20 degrees above the horizontal. And it's moving that way in a two Tesla magnetic field that's directed upwards. And I wanna know the magnitude of the force that it experiences. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this. The best thing to do when approaching a problem like this is to make a diagram first. I've got the magnetic field pointing up and I've got my velocity, which is directed 20 degrees above the horizontal. All right. So we can use the right hand rule real quickly just to get the direction of the force. We'll say velocity, magnetic field, the force is out of the board, which we're going to indicate with this dot like that. All right. So now I want to know the magnitude. Well, F is Q V perp B. All right. Well, the charge is easy enough. Seven times 10 to the minus six. Remember, we're going to work in SI units because we're going to be good physicists here. All right. So seven times 10 to the minus six. What's the part of the velocity that's perpendicular to the magnetic field? Well, that would be this part of the velocity. So that means that I need to take the speed, the hypotenuse of this triangle, and multiply by the cosine of 20 degrees because cosine is the adjacent side, the side that's helping to make the angle. So we'll have 5,000 times cosine of 20 degrees. All right, and that's gonna give us the V perp. So it'll be five times 10 to the three, cosine 20, and then I've got to multiply by the magnetic field, which is two. All right? So if I put all that in my calculator, I'll end up with 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus two newtons, or we could say that as 66 millinewtons. And that's the force. That's the Lorentz force law.